Does the Father's word Torah mean law? What's the Father's word for commandment? Does it mean ordinance? Does it mean precepts? Let's take a look at the Odeote. Hello, my friends. You know, I've done, uh, done videos before about uh, Torah and the fact that uh, it does not mean law. In fact, I've, uh, I've always um, said that it means more like uh, the Father's loving instructions to his children and that these are his ways of uh, showing us how to avoid the traps of the devil. And, um, you know, I, I've garnered that understanding um, by studying the whole word of Yahuwah. But um, let's take a look at the word uh, Torah which uh, is in Strong's Exhaustive Concordance as number H8451. And, uh, you know, it's always interpreted in the English, almost always, as law. And if you look at Strong's, it says uh, a precept or statute. We can see here uh, that Torah is spelled Tau, Wa, Resh and He. Uh, if we take Tau, you're looking at uh, two crossed sticks. And um, it's, it's the picture of two crossed sticks. And um, it represents a sign, a signature, a monument. Uh, let's go to the other outside letter, He which um, is a picture of a man with his arms raised in worship, uh, awe for the Father, and it represents revelation and the Ruach, the Spirit. Move to the inside, uh, and the first on the, um, on the right would be Wa. That's a picture of a tent peg. And um, it means to secure your tent <laughs> with Elohim. I'm always talking about, you know, pitch a tent with Elohim. Uh, that's, you know, it's always there. It's always woven uh, into everything. And then further on the left, we have Resh, picture of a head. And it has to do with headship. It has to do with who your headship is and, and what your thoughts are. So, uh, if we look at Torah in the Odeote, this is, as I've always said, when we see the Father's uh, Torah, which uh, is often referred to as the first five books of the scriptures, um, that's known as, as his Torah. Um, and interestingly enough, in the Hebrew customs, uh, marriage certificate, is in five parts. And uh, the first five books of the scriptures of the uh, first covenant is a marriage contract, as is the first five books of the renewed covenant. It's also a marriage contract. So, um, you know, the Torah is a marriage contract in that sense. But here with the Odeo, um the Father's Torah is his signature. It's uh, a monument and a sign uh, to those looking over at the uh, the Ot Hay, to those who um, 
have awe for the Father and worship Him. Um, his, uh, his Torah gives revelation when you meditate on His Torah. And it also creates the filling of the Ruach. I've talked about this in uh, previous videos. When you pray to the Father and you dedicate yourself to Him and ask Him to be your master along with his son and to fill you with his ruach, uh, he puts his ruach in you. That's stage one. But after that is stage two where you receive the filling of the ruach. And that's something that grows more and more and more. You can receive the filling of the ruach in greater levels. Uh, you'll uh, advance yourself in the gifts of the ruach and in the fruit of the Ruach, uh, and in revelation, uh, and all those things. This is what the Torah uh, imparts. We look at, the, um, at Wa, the tent peg, and, you know, it's talking about those who secure and, uh, and build a tent with Elohim. And, of course, Resh, it's those who recognize Elohim as their headship, and their thoughts are on him and his word, and then their thoughts wind up becoming his thoughts. This is truly what the Torah is. Um, it's not only loving instructions from the Father to his children, showing them how to avoid the pitfalls of the enemy, and that certainly is a very powerful point about it all, but uh, it's a, um, a, a signpost. It's a monument. It's the Father's signature uh, being placed on his children. Those, uh, that's Tao. And then those uh, with the, the oat hay, those who worship him and have awe for him, uh, he gives them revelation and he uh, gives them greater fillings of his ruach because, wow, they're pitching their tent with him and uh, Resh because they look at him as their headship and their thoughts are on him. Um, back to Wa, they're pitching their tent with him, not with things of the world. Uh, Resh, um, he's their headship, their thoughts are on him rather than things of the world uh, being what they worship uh, uh, or what their thoughts are about. You could say the same thing, you know, with Hey. Uh, they don't worship the world. They worship uh, Abba. And uh, even Tao, it's his signature on them, not the signature of the world. Um, so, there's Torah. Now, in terms of the words we see in English in, uh, in the scriptures, uh, command, commanded, and commandment. Uh, these words come from Strong's number H6680, and it's the uh, Aramaic Hebrew word sawach, sawach, and uh, it usually says that it means to appoint, to charge, to command, to set in order. Sawach is spelled sad, wa, and Chet. Sad. <laughs> One of my favorites. You know, the path. It's the way. Uh, it's the narrow path that leads to Chai that uh, few find. Uh, and it, it points at righteousness. Go to the, uh, the other side, and we're looking at Chet, the picture of a fence. It protects, it divides, it separates uh, those who love Elohim from those who don't, or from those who love the world. Um, and it's not so appropriate to say uh, separating those who love Elohim from those who don't, because many people say they love Elohim, but their true love is actually in the world, and 
uh, they're blinded. They don't even, they don't realize, they, they say that they love Elohim. They don't realize that their love for the world is greater because they're not in the Word enough to receive uh, revelation, to, uh, to know the difference. Um, chet also has to do with the, uh, the net chetef, those who were taken up, uh, those who belong to the Father, those who the Father has chosen as a gift to his Son, as the bride. And uh, chet also has to do with the operation of the gifts of the ruach. Uh, and then here the heart of the word is wa again, the tent peg. Uh, securing your tent with Elohim. Not only are you pitching it, you're securing it. Uh, you're really working on pitching your tent, making it secure with him. How? By spending time in, in prayer, uh, spending time in conversation with Elohim, uh, spending time in his word. So, um, sawach, wherever you see command or commanded or commandment as an English word in the scriptures when you're reading, um, it's really talking about the narrow path and righteousness. It's talking, uh, that's of course tzad, and uh, it's talking about uh, chet, uh, the fence that surrounds uh, those who love him and separates them from the world, marks them for the net chetef, and uses them when the Father wants to apply the gifts of the Ruach. He'll use those. And as I've said before, um, a lot of people, they look at the gifts, you know, uh, prophecy, healing, and so on and so forth, and they think, oh, this person has the gift of prophecy. That person has the gift of healing. And you read it in the English, and it even looks like that's what the word is saying, but it's, it's not. One will be given the gift of prophecy uh, because the Father needs to prophesy, and that person is pitching their tent with him, and they are uh, on the narrow path, they are in the way, and uh, he uses them. And then over here, he used this person for healing someone because they're pitching their tent with him, because they are on the narrow path, and, um, you know, they are his. But, uh, you know, the next day, he might use that person he used for prophecy, he might use that person to give healing. And the person who gave healing, he might use that person to uh, speak a word of knowledge. Nobody owns any of the gifts, but those who are on the narrow path, uh, those who are pitching their tent with Elohim, uh, they can be used by the Father to impart any one of those gifts at any time. Just because somebody healed someone once, they didn't heal that person. Uh, Elohim healed the person. He just used that person as his tool. So they don't own that gift. Um, they're just being used by the Father because they love him and uh, they're pitching their uh, tent with him. Um, so it could be any of those gifts. And uh, this is what uh, Sawach is all about. Not necessarily a command or a commandment, but rather uh, something that points at the narrow path, uh, protecting uh, those who love Abba and separating from them from the world, and uh, those who are pitching a tent with him, a matter of teaching them how to pitch that tent. Now, here we have another uh, slide, because there's another word usually for commandments, with an S on the end, plural commandment. Commandments. And this one is the Aramaic Hebrew word miswa. Uh, Strong's number H4687. This means to command. Uh, it means a law. It means an ordinance, according to these westernized 
uh, interpretations of Strong's and whatever dictionaries you look at. But Miswa is spelled Mem, Tsad, Wa, and He. Uh, Mem is a picture of water and uh, of blood. Yeshua. Uh, water and blood are references to the word. Uh, we are washed by the word. It's a reference to blood. We are purchased by the blood of Yeshua. Um, and also it occurs to me a lot of times when I look at Mem that it's a constantly flowing thing. Um, the other outside uh, oat is He again. It has to do with those who have awe for the Father. They worship Him. It uh, brings revelation. It represents uh, the fifth dimension of spirit. Ruach. And uh, again we see Tzad. Uh, the narrow path. The way. Righteousness. And uh, Wa, the tent peg. Uh, to secure pitching your tent with Elohim. Same as uh, Sawach with Miswa, we see uh, Tzad and Wa are there, but uh, this just adds a picture of the work of Yeshua and the washing of the Word by being in the Father's Word, along with those who uh, worship and have awe for the Father, things that deliver uh, revelation and um, bring people in closer contact with his ruach. That would be uh, when you see the word commandments, plural. Um, we take a look at that. So, um, just a quick study here on uh, three words using the odiot. <laughs> uh, if you have any questions about these, let me know. I hope this uh, video has been a better chat to you, my friend. Shalom. But you refuse to dance